license and registration, he can sense your aggravation. The head of the fallen angel. The world is muttering the under the, the floorboards. Stomp even louder. On time. Let them know you are alive today. Or unhum. Did you know that your hands came with a ripple effect? Whisper tones unraveling like silk. Blood, sweat, and tears win by any means, poetry. Sway, look at me. Is a piece of the pie too good for me? Some may call it brought the mic. We call it poetry. The red glove held high above the crowd, heralding that pride faith, hard work, and determination had done their work. Words were no longer needed, or like a baton in the hand of a masterful maestro. Her orchestra followed enthusiastically. Their sacred song, written generations ago, resounded inside souls that had dared hold on to hope. This day, smiles said what words could not. Eyes glistened, moist with reaffirmed purpose and thanksgiving. And so it was on this brisk January day Hers was the task of directing the way. Fingers raised heavenward, signaling through a diminutive yet undeniable message. This generation would see change. And the one to whom the task had fallen, she who had traveled hundreds of miles garnering smiles while guiding her people. And his too, she who now lifted this symbol of leadership, beamed even brighter than the new dawn. Could have been blue, but alas, the die had been cast. So like a crimson baton, Beacon in the inaugural sun, proclaiming that all should follow, she pointed the way forward on this inauguration day. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Sojourn with Words. I'm your host, Sister Joy, right here on CTV. And we are, of course, known for presenting only the best in poetry. And today is no exception. I'm absolutely honored to present my good friend, Chantel Walker, who is known in poetry circles as Grata Love. Hello. Now, Grata Love is a poet, an author, a founder of DMV Renaissance Awards, an organization that celebrates local poets in and from the DMV. Before I go any further, please uh, join me in welcoming Grata. Welcome to Sojourn with Words. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here and honored because Sister Joy is thebomb.com. So I'm so excited to be in the space with you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we want, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be hearing about who Grana Love is. We're going to be hearing, of course, some of her phenomenal poetry. But let, let me start off easy and just give a little bit of background by way of bio. As a poet, she uses her gift to evoke conversations with compassion and by providing a unique and empathetic perspective on life. In, in 2019, she published her first chapbook of poetry titled Brave New Soul. Now, Ms. Love has been featured at Busboys and Poets, Pure Poetry DC, and on WUSA 9's Great Day Washington. 
to watch her perform is to experience her. To come to any of her shows, be ready to think, to feel, and heal. So that kind of gives you a little bit about it, about this, this phenomenal poet who is our guest here on Sojourn with Words. But I want to talk to you today, Grata, about one thing that I think is just absolutely phenomenal that you did because you're in my camp when you're uplifting and heralding other poets. And I'm talking about you being the co-founder of the DMV Renaissance Awards. Please tell our audience about that and how you came to do it and what it's all about. Wow. So honestly, of course, it came by just observing and being a supporter and fan of the art of poetry, of people like you, and then just realizing that we wanted to create a space. So me and two other poets were at Pure Poetry one day and we were like, these poets are so dope. They should be celebrated. Like they deserve awards. And we often find that people have to leave the DMV or go to LA or Atlanta and other places to get recognition. And we wanted to create a platform that could be right at home. Like you can get your flowers right at home. So the three of us, it was myself, Christina Gray and Crystal Lynn. And we started the DMV Renaissance Awards with an open mic. And it started in 2020. So right before the pandemic hit, And then we had to push it to 2021 and we did a virtual show. We pre-recorded, we facilitate nominations, voting, and then the award show. We allow the people to speak. So it gives a good opportunity for you to hear about the people who really support you and actually see them show up for you, see them vote and, and nominate you and repost and all of those things. So even just to be a nominee, people are super excited. And this year we had our first in-person award show on October 1st at Creative Suitland. And it was magical. <laughs> it was like... And you know what? Let, let's rewind for a minute because uh, <laughs> we have viewers that may not be aware because this show does air online. So DMV stands for... Oh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Yeah, so I'm from Prince George's County, and so I assume, you know, I go around, and everybody's like, Department of Motor Vehicle? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> exactly. So that that representation is a broad umbrella that, that you put out there, and I think so many of us, and I have to say thank you for even whomever it was that nominated me. <laughs> Although I didn't win, I was very honored to have been even in the running. So many, so many great poets being recognized and and peer recognition is so significant. It means so much. So thank you again on behalf of so many poets who have been a part of that celebration. Of course. Now, of course. When, when you talk about, is this going to be an annual or every other year? Or what, what is this uh, celebration looking like at this time? So our goal is to do it annually. And so, so far for two years, however, we had to make it happen virtually, in person, you know, so annually around September. So last year we did October 1st, but our goal is to have it annually in September. Okay. Okay. Well, October is National Arts and Humanities Month. So that, I know. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind. You know, people are looking for ways to celebrate the arts in October. So just as a tidbit, keep that in mind. You know, I'm going to take note of that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's rewind even a bit further back. How did you come to start writing poetry? What was there uh, a, a life moment or is it something that has just always been a part of you, your, your you know, experience as a, as a Black woman or as a student or you tell us? Well, I think it was a culmination of events in my life. So it started with my sister bringing home a calligraphy project that was a poem. And it was like a very simple friendship poem. Like, I'm your friend till the end. If you need your heart mend, like things like that. And so I remember reading it obsessively. I was about six years old 
And she was in high school and I just kept reading it. it. Before I knew what poetry was, I was obsessed with it. And so in middle school, I had a teacher, Mr. Salam. He would make us write in journals and share our work in front of the class. And so we would analyze rap lyrics like Tupac and Slick Rick. And so it really taught us the art of storytelling pun intended. Um, And from there, I gained the confidence. And honestly, I even remember, I always say this in interviews, there was a girl, Nicole, who told me I had a whack rhyme scheme. And I, that was a pivotal moment because that was a moment I could have stopped. But there was a part of me that said, well, maybe that's my style. And I think I remember Mr. Salam saying, you know, like, that's okay. It can be free verse. It can be whatever you want it to be. And so once I hit, I graduated from college, I was working a nine to five and I was crying in the closet, trying to figure out what my purpose was. Like, I didn't feel purpose driven in my job. And I remember looking up at the journals in my closet and I realized, oh my gosh, I've been right. Like God gave me a gift to write. Why am I not doing that and sharing it? And so many people told me to over the years family events and, you know, just little things here and there. But around 2018 was when I took myself serious and really got out there. Okay. 2018. Okay. That's, that's not that far back. So when when you talk about, well, your, the evolution of your, of your womanhood, your healing, your spirituality through poetry, what was it that that made poetry, as opposed to other genres of writing, what was it that made poetry the approach for for you to give voice to your story? That is a wonderful question. Hmm. I think the thing that drew me to poetry was the rhythm in it, the the fact that I could not play an instrument, but also use an instrument to convey a message. It's not as long. You don't have to read a whole novel to get my message. You can laugh in between. You can cry in between. Just, I feel like there's so much room to evoke emotion in so many ways with words. And poetry was just my natural inclination. It just would come out. And so then I realized that's that's my method. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you consider you because there are folks that feel there is a difference between the two? And do you feel that you're more of a spoken word artist or you feel more uh, of a poet, of a literary poet? I like to blend the two. Some people do say spoken word artist. I prefer spoken word poet because I never want to lose that. Like, I never want to forget that poetry is my core and writing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, I, I do understand that. You you have a book, a, your debut book, Brave New Soul, which was released in 2019. So that's that book has been out for a while. Is it still available? And tell us about the book. Okay, so my website is under construction at the moment, but the book is available. I have a few copies on hand, but I am working on re-releasing it. The book was just... It was a big moment because it's one thing to speak your words, but to then give people the power and the opportunity to take it home with them. It was so many times that I talked myself out of it. And then I feel like, like we talk about spirituality, I feel like God, the universe, I say the unigod, sat me down. I quit my job, (laughs) did not have a backup. I was depressed. And in that time, that three month span that I was not working, like a nine to five, I wrote the book. And I think as much as it was, it seemed like a hard time, it was a very intentional time. So the the work that is in the book is so intentional. The positioning of the poems, the haikus that break up the sections, it's, you know, it I have room to just put my full self into it. So That was a big moment to just not talk myself out of it and actually do it. Okay, exciting. So so you talk about haiku. Are you one that that gravitates toward form poetry, sonnets and and or is it more free flow, open verse? Totally more free form. (laughs) Okay, okay. I enjoy the challenge of having form. 
I just always found that it it is a challenge. It's not a natural thing for me. I think for some people, it's it comes to them. Haikus are their main form of expression. For me, it is not. And so I just, you know, have to be real with myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I do understand. I, I love, I, I mean, you know, we know Kim B. Miller is the haiku queen in the DMV. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, there are a few of us. Uh, I think Kaniki Jakarta is is also very good when it comes to haiku, but the, that's, that's not something that comes natural to me either. I, I've done a few, but when I see it done well, and it's like, oh my gosh, I just, I love it. Right. Talk about succinct and absolutely on point. That is a, a form of poetry that is well recognized globally. And, and I, I love it when it's done well. So I look forward to seeing some of your haiku. Perhaps you'll share at least one or two today mm -hmm. during the episode that you have when you're sharing your poetry. Now, we, we do want to look towards the future as well. So what's on the horizon for Grada Love? Wow. Hmm. Of course, the DMV Renaissance Awards, putting that together, organizing. I would also say I recently hit a point in my journey where I want to be more tactful with how I release my poetry. So I'm taking a new approach. The same way musicians roll out their singles or, you know, their new songs and they build conversation around it. I'm working from that angle these days. I, I used to just kind of put it out as soon as I wrote it. And I think I want to be more intentional with how I release it. So look forward to more conversations on social media about the topics around my poems. Look forward to more just conversations because the conversations lead to healing and I'm excited to use the art form in that way or grant it to the community in that way where we can all heal together through the art. Okay. Are you a poet that collaborates with other art forms such as music or visual art? Or is this something that you have delved into or that you look forward to delving into? I'm so glad you asked. You These questions are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a long time dream of using art therapy. So I am working to become a therapeutic art life coach. So I I use music. I freestyle sometimes. If you go on my Instagram, there's a freestyle that I really like that I did. And it was just fun. It was something I used to do in middle school and it brings out my inner child. So I do experiment with freestyling sometimes. I am a painter. I doodle. I sketch. Those are my forms of healing. And I'm also looking to share it more. It's something that I've held, I've courted in a way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so really in fact, you, you are a, a creative. You're not just a poet. You're not just a musician. You're not just a visual artist, but you are in fact a creative. So I look forward to, <laughs> to experiencing uh, Grata Love, both here on Sojourn with Words, but I'm going to have to get your book because I don't have it. And that's not, that's rare for me to have a guest on my show that I don't have the book. So, Oh my gosh, I'll definitely send you one. <laughs> that's, 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 hey, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So it's, it's approaching that time that we're now going to actually hear some poetry by mm -hmm. Grata Love. And uh, I, I look forward to hearing feedback from our viewers. Of course, you can always be in touch with Sojourn with words through Sister Joy, and that would simply be Sister Joy at well, let's let's do this one, Poet Sister Joy at AOL.com. And that's P-O-E-T-S-I-S-T-A-H-J-O-Y at AOL.com. Be in touch. Let us know what you think about our guest poets and about the episodes that you've experienced right here on CTV. And with that having been said, how about I turn everything over to our guest poet and sit back along with our viewers and enjoy poetry by Grata Love. Okay. I'm going to start with a poem that introduces me for those of you who don't know me. Who am I? 
I am the first discovery of my kind. Actual masterpiece. Crafted by the master in me, call it self-mastery. Shiro, your favorite hero's hero. Save the day with compassion you found yourself unworthy of. I am soul speaker. I'll set fire to your sneakers until your soul rises. Don't care about your feet if your mind is dying. I'll wait for truth. Meet you at the altar. Baptize you in revolution. Paint my wildest dreams come true. I am a mother by right. Not just capabilities. There are no physical manifestations of my seeds, but I make the world grow. Challenging intellect and physical abilities alike. I told you I was heavy. You couldn't carry me if you tried too many times. I watched both mind and ego die. Without a bullet, without a disease, without breath leaving body. I watched surrender to situations lead people to wells of death too many times. I watched their power transferred to the world around them. And woman in me resurrected dead beings. I honor your blessing. Leave your sins where you repent. Leave mine in life's classroom. I ain't no avatar, but you could call me an airbender. Because in 100 degree weather, I give you breath of the coldest winter. I am both saint and sinner. Both loser and winner, both child and elder, both food and shelter, I am light. Like you have never seen it before. Damaged, bruised, but refurbished goods, you could categorize me as like new. I am home improvement without grout. Ain't no copy nor paste, we work from inside out, find peace. Like it's my only life's journey. My only God-given right and responsibility. Oh, wait, who am I? I'm so glad you asked. I am the first discovery of my kind. Actual masterpiece. Crafted by the master in me, call it self-mastery. Shiro, your favorite hero's hero. But for the sake of time, you could just call me Grata Love. Thank you. Ooh, 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 all right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, I mean, when you said, I am home improvement without the grout. I'm like, <gasps> I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you Thank so you. much. Well, let me not disrupt your flow. What else you got <laughs> going for us? Well, this next piece, very intentional. For all of the creatives, we all know there are people who doubt our journey, who question why we're even doing this poetry thing. Like, you can't make money off that. And I tell you, you can. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> But this was a piece that I wrote just in response to something someone said. And this is what they said. No offense, but do you know how many people move out to LA and don't make it? The statement of a quote unquote intellect. The ones who support your dreams as long as they're smaller than their realities. I said, the ones who support your dreams as long as they're smaller than their realities, I laugh <laughs> externally. And backtrack to write this statement and mark this day because a challenge accepted is your invitation to get out of my way. My ambition cannot be danced around or paraded for the sake of speaking. My actions will creep up on you and recognition will scare you. Be careful how you speak to a visionary. Your hope should be that you're in the vision, sliced and diced into precision. This game being played ain't for the sake of playing. I'm in this. Dance with me or hold up the wall watching. I don't care what you do, but whatever you choose, make your decision now. Because the day that I'm crowned, I would hate for you to be in the audience and not backstage. Stop changing faces. Eventually, I won't be able to recognize you. But, um, <laughs> Excuse me as I bow. I'm just crafting myself now and racking up energy to manifest my inner G grata. Spell it out with me. G-R-A-D-A. -A. And don't forget the L-O-V-E. You might know me, but if not, you'll get to know me. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that beautiful, beautiful piece. Of course, of course. I think it's important for us to remember who we are and 
that the only opinion that really matters at the end of the day is ours. I think Kanye has taught us that. <laughs> Your opinion matters. If you like it, enjoy it, you know? So yeah, this next piece is going to be a love poem. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I haven't wrote a love poem in a while, but I love this one. It's a good, yeah, it's a good go-to. Whether you're in a relationship or have a past lover that you just, you know, hold on to a little bit. <laughs> All right. I don't care who or what your first love was. I just know I'll be your last. And you don't have to promise. I swear I will find you. Strip down bare to my soul's compass and follow every instinct leading to you. How dare you think I'd let you get away? I don't care that there were many before me. I don't care for the ones coming after, but when you feel life slipping at age 22 or 34 or 63, just remember that the last love will always be me. If you need moments of clarity, trips from reality, if you need me to run as far as you can see, just remember that the ending will always include me. And whether I gather four or 14 bodies in between, they will never equal you. Because the physical body attempts to cope with the soul sorrow, yet the breadcrumbs will always lead back to you. Our reunions will be feasts where we feed on each other's energy. They will be dances with separation and intensity that only send me back to your feet. With your hands to my face, lifting body and soul, I hope you know that every step away, strengthening space is a spit at destiny because your love will always lead back to me. Your head in my hands with nose pressed into breasts, your muscle memory will always recognize touching me. Do you remember the first time we touched? You clasped my hands into yours, attempted to read my energy as you asked me to read yours. Uncertainty, I responded. And now on the other side, I realized you had no idea what you were getting into. How deeply my spirit would touch you. You read my book with your eyes and mind, stayed guarded as long as you could. But the Unigod had other plans, roots and maps of truth. Truth, they are your proof that when you follow your heart, you will find me. I was always right next to the you are here sign, but you look past me as if this thing isn't lasting, but I'm no longer as afraid as I used to be. You took my fear and showed me transparency, the most blatant form of honesty. So in honor of truth, whether or not you're my last, I will always be the last love for you. Thank you. Whew. Fabulous, fabulous. How beautiful was that? Well, thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much. Thank you. Sojourn with Words viewers, you have been listening to the wonderful poetry of Grata Love. And we know that you You've been enjoying it because we've been enjoying it as well. We we want to make sure that you are in touch with her and her contact information has been shared on screen. And please do reach out to her. Let her know that you appreciate what she's doing. And of course, if you're interested in her products, she'll let you know all about that. But we want everyone to be able to connect with our guest poets. So whether you're reaching out to Grata Love through her contact information, social media, and what have you, or through me, which I'll be happy to pass on information to her, Sister Joy, poet Sister Joy at AOL.com, let us know. We are very happy to connect poets throughout the DMV. So that pretty much concludes today's episodes. Hmm. Excuse me. And Grata, thank you again for being our guest poet today. Of course, it's been an honor. I appreciate you, the platform, just the space to be an artist. <laughs> okay. Well, as one creative to another, I thank you for uplifting platforms for poets to be recognized. I also thank you for your excellence in the work that you present as an artist in your own right. We look forward to staying in touch. Mm -hmm.